In this video, I'll be talking about ownership. Ownership is what allows Rust to execute code in a performant manner and helps ensure that compiled code executes correctly under various circumstances. All programs must track their memory usage. If they fail to do so, a memory leak occurs. A memory leak is when a program fails to track which memory is being used, and so then it has to reserve new pieces of memory. All programming languages utilize their own method of managing memory, and Rust utilizes what is called an ownership model. In the ownership model, the owner of the memory is responsible for cleaning up the memory. And an owner in Rust is simply a function. In Rust, the memory can either be moved or it can be borrowed from the owner. Let's take a look at an example. So far in our programs, we've been moving memory. So let's break that down. In this program, we have a light enumeration with two variants. We have a function that displays the light. It simply matches, and depending on what kind of light it is, it displays an appropriate message. In our main function, we create a dull light, assign it to the dull variable, and then display the light two times. There is a problem with this program, however, and that is, since we're calling display light twice, the program will not compile. Even though everything looks fine, there is an error. The error is due to the ownership model. When we create this new light and assign it to the dull variable, it is owned by the main function. So anything between these curly braces is owned by the main function. When we call display light with our dull light, this dull light is being moved into a new function. So this dull light here will get moved to display light and be placed up here into the display light function. Now that the data has been moved into the display light function, it is now owned by this function. And any function that owns data is required to delete the data once the function completes. This means that the light, which has been moved from main over into display light, will get deleted once the display light function finishes. So the function will take the light, match on it, and print out an appropriate message, dull in this case. And then once this match block completes, we'll reach the end of the function, in which case this light will be deleted. Once the light is deleted, it's no longer available for use again in the same function call. So everything works fine on the first function call. This light gets moved into the function. After the function executes, this dull light is no longer available because the display light function, which is the new owner, deletes it. We then attempt to call the function again with the dull light, but the dull light is gone because it was previously deleted. The compiler will tell us about this error, and it will also explain that our dull light was moved into this function, and we're not able to use it again in the same function call because it's already been deleted. The key thing to remember is wherever you create a variable, that becomes the initial owner. So this dull variable is owned by the main function, and once you call another function with that data, the owner then is changed to that function. So we change the owner from the main function to the display light function on this first function call. In order to fix the error where we're unable to use this display light function twice, we have to do what is called a borrow. Here's the same program again that's been modified to use borrows instead of moving. It looks almost identical, except in our display light function, we have an ampersand. And within our function calls, we have ampersands as well. The ampersand symbol in Rust indicates that we are borrowing data. This is also referred to as a reference. So we're referencing data or we're borrowing data. So what happens now is we create our dull variable just as we did, and the main function will immediately become the owner, so it's allowed to delete it. We call the display light function, and we let the function borrow the dull light. So this dull light will go up here just as before, and we see that it's borrowing the light. The owner is still the main function. The display light function will match. We will print out dull since it's a dull light, and then we will return from the function back to the main function. Since the display light function is borrowing this light, it's not allowed to delete it since it is not the owner. The main function is still the owner. So once control goes back to the main function, we can call display light a second time with the dull light because the dull light still exists. 
it's still here because the owner has not deleted it yet because we have not reached the end of the function yet. So display light will be called twice. It will print out dull two times, and then our program will properly compile and run. Remember with ownership that when you create a variable within a function, that function will own it. So we create the dull light here in the main function, so that function owns this dull light. And we use the ampersand symbol, as we see here in the function call and the function signature. That means that this function here, display light, will borrow the data. And if it's borrowed, it's not allowed to delete it, as only the owner is allowed to delete the data. Since we're borrowing, we can call the display light function as many times as we want. To recap, memory must be managed in some way to prevent memory leaks. Rust uses an ownership model to accomplish memory management. The owner of the data must clean up the memory, and this will automatically occur at the end of the scope, which is the end of the curly braces. The default behavior when you're calling functions is to move the memory to a new owner. And if you just want to borrow data, you'll use an ampersand symbol to allow code to borrow memory, specifically to allow functions to borrow memory.